So, hello, hello. Hi. <clears throat> So, you guys, I've got a wonderful guest today. We're going to be talking about something that is fairly specialized, and it's called the elemental diet, not to be confused with the elimination diet, which is something that I talk a lot about. Uh, for those of you who have my books, you know, the whole thing is based on the elimination diet. So we're eliminating things like gluten, dairy, soy, corn, sugar to some extent, and uh, try to focus on organic and high nutrient food. So this is quite different. And um, But I think um, many of you might find this super helpful if you're dealing with a lot of really chronic uh, digestive issues that just would not go away. And you've done, you know, everything from SCD and AIP and low FODMAP, and you've gone vegan and vegetarian, and you kind of got a wake up moment that that's not necessarily um, a healthy way of being. And then, you know, you did a lot of other, uh, and you did a lot of supplements and a lot of antimicrobials, and maybe you got a diagnosis for SIBO. So all of those, um, I think this call is going to be really interesting for you. So with me today, we've got Dr. Roy Steinbach and my very dear friend, both of them are very dear friends, but <laughs> a dear friend is Debbie Steinbach. Um, and so, you know, we guys, before we dive in, why don't we just tell our audience a little bit about like who you are and maybe just like a quick story of like, why did you, uh, how did you discover that mental diet and like what difference did it make for you? You start? Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm Dr. Roy Steinbach and I'm a board certified pediatrician and I, I have a holistic practice here in Boulder um, with Debbie, who's our nutritionist. And um, the focus of my practice is a lot of digestive disorders, autoimmunity, inflammatory conditions, asthma, eczema, and a lot of mental health stuff. Um, and it's through that that really we started using the elemental diet specifically initially for um sort of bowel rash for people and also for, to treat small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, but it's been a much bigger part of Debbie's, Debbie's practice. Yeah. So I'm Debbie Steinbach. Um, I'm a nutrition counselor. And uh, just like Roy, my specialty is in digestive disorders, autoimmunity, food allergies, and sensitivity. And I started my practice 23 years ago. However, I personally was diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease at 18 years old. So that was when I discovered the elemental diet as an option, you know, for bowel rest for things like Crohn's disease and colitis. Thankfully, I didn't have to use an elemental diet to get myself into remission from IBD, but it was about, you know, 10 or 12 years ago that I started seeing it being used for other conditions. And that was when I really dove into it and started doing it in my clinical practice. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can use an elemental diet, which we'll get to later on in this call. Um, but initially I had been using it partially. And then um, about 10, 12 years ago, I started using full elemental diets with clients and was kind of blown away by the results that, that some people got from them and for a variety of different conditions. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna be talking about those. So for those of you who are listening to us live, uh, why don't you come on over and introduce yourself and just tell us what kind of digestive stuff are you dealing with um, that's been chronic, annoying, expensive, uh, debilitating perhaps. And so just, just share that with us and, um, and, you know, we are going to be taking, we're going to, uh, we're budgeting for a Q and a call towards the end. And so definitely want to address any of the questions that are coming up. So why don't we just start off first by maybe, cause you kind of already alluded to that in a big way. I just want to connect, uh, very closely with like, who is this really for? Like, before we talk about what elemental diet is and about the shakes and the whole idea behind it, but Let's just talk about like, who is this for and what kind of clinical results are you seeing? Because you mentioned it's like it can go beyond just like SIBO and Crohn's mm -hmm. and celiacs, right? Yep, exactly. So who we've been using an elemental diet to, to treat mostly is all the things that you mentioned. So pretty much anyone that has GI issues that have been hard to treat and, and have not responded to other treatments and other types of like bowel rest, um, you know, diets. And, and so that would fall under everything that you mentioned already. So SIBO, IBS, chronic constipation, uh, acid reflux, GERD, eosinophilic esophagitis, um, uh, food allergies and sensitivities. So that whole gamut of digestive disorders. 
But on top of that, we've also used it for people that have pain conditions like rheumatoid arthritis um, and just even unknown pain disorders. Um, and kind of unknown inflammatory disorder. So mm -hmm. when you do what we're doing long enough, you get people who have tried really almost everything and they have sort of these yeah. sort of bizarre set of symptoms that are very difficult to treat. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, as we know, sort of the gut is the, the, the center of the universe for our health. Um, and oftentimes we need to really rest and heal the gut, decrease inflammatory um, inflammatory products, like even regular food that can go and can increase inflammation in the gut as well. So sometimes just taking a break from all of that can be helpful for mm -hmm. these sort of mystery conditions that we've seen. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the, there's like a group of conditions like uh, cancer, not that an elemental diet is a treatment for cancer, but when someone has gut issues and weight loss because of cancer, you can use an elemental diet for that, as well as things like cystic fibrosis, AIDS, like any condition where, you know, putting easily digested calories into the body would be important for an individual. And then we've kind of experimented with it for a broad range of other autoimmune conditions. And, you know, really the important thing to understand is like how that links back to like the gut. Cause what we're really trying to do is like rest and heal the gut to kind of treat autoimmunity and those other conditions as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I just posted there cause this is something that we get a lot and I'm sure you guys hear that in your own practice. Like I've tried everything for my gut already. Right. And like there's, and so one thing I want to just share with everyone is that if you're catching yourself saying that, um, first of all, I commend you for doing just doing so many different things and exploring so many, you know, it's, it takes a huge commitment, right, of mental, emotional energy and just kind of dragging your entire family through like the next protocol you want to do because you're the one cooking, right? <laughs> so, you know, we totally get that. Um, but it's also the other side of the coin is that when we say I've tried it all, it kind of creates a sense of resignation. And, you know, it just kind of shuts everything out saying that I've tried it all. Nothing is going to ever help me. I'm going to just be struggling with these with these conditions. And so remember that everyone, everyone, including me, Debbie, Dr. Roy, have got blind spots. We all have them. And we know we do what we know at a time that we are exposed to information. Right. And you've done your research. You've seen your practitioners. A lot of practitioners don't even know what the elemental diet is. And so, you know, one of the things that I want to thank you for being here today and being open about things is just to be able to receive information. There is could be another avenue that you have not been exposed to yet. You just didn't know about. And that could be potentially something that really is God sent um, to for you. So can we talk a little bit about um, like what are some of the clinical results? Like, do you want to just maybe give some very specific examples of like patients that you have seen? some transformative stories of healing um, that kind of maybe even surprised you guys. Yeah, I wanted to say one thing to what you had just said already is, you know, I think one thing that's important to point out is that even though a lot of people haven't heard about an elemental diet, this is not something new. This is not like a fad diet. This mm. is something that has a ton of like science and decades of research behind it. Like elemental diets were actually created in the 1950s. Um, and really went into like the medical world in like the 1970s. 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is something that's been, you know, used for what is that 50 plus years at this point. So again, not something that's, you know, kind of come and go. Yeah. And it's been used really regularly in pediatrics. So we use it a lot with like infants who have severe food allergies or mm -hmm. colitis or things like that mm -hmm. much more frequently and readily. It's different formulas an adult would take, but they do make hypoallergenic basically elemental infant formulas. Yeah. And one thing to just speak to your list about, because mm -hmm. I think your community would understand this so greatly, is that sometimes medical professionals are so reluctant mm -hmm. to promote something dietary, you know, mm -hmm. even though they can cite, you know, so much of the studies, statistics and successes, you know, that it has. Um, it's just not in their tool belt. So es especially gastroenterologists, which seems counter counterintuitive. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so back to your question about the the successes we've seen. Do you want to talk about some of them? First? Yeah, so so we've seen a bunch of success. Well, of course, I think Debbie maybe can talk more about this, but of course we've seen lots of successes with SIBO. And I'd say that's probably the majority of cases that we've treated with elemental diet in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. um, because that's the majority of people. It's become really popular in the SIBO world. Um, so a lot more awareness in that. But we've seen some really great effects with people who, uh, Let's just talk about SIBO for a second. Uh, sure. So SIBO, just for anybody that knows about SIBO, 
there's three types of SIBO that you can get diagnosed with hydrogen, methane, and hydrogen sulfide. And whereas an elemental diet has only been studied for hydrogen SIBO, we have seen successes across the board for all three types of bacterial overgrowth with astounding results. And with SIBO, there's a very specific treatment time. It's like two to three weeks of treatment time. And there's an 80 to 85 success, uh, 80 to 85 percent success rate in eradication of SIBO. Mm, and yeah. that is huge. Like you can't even touch that with antibiotics. You can't touch that with herbs and especially not in a two week you know, two to three week period. So, and the, also the level of gas reduction is dramatically higher from what we've seen when you use the elemental diet versus using herbs or medications. Mm -hmm. um, and for a lot of people, I imagine who are listening, who are your kind of uh, client population, are very sensitive in general and oftentimes don't do well on medications or herbs. We see that or a lot. Don't want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And generally, though there are some minor, I don't know if I would call them side effects, but things to be aware of when you're doing an elemental diet, it's really well tolerated mm -hmm. with most people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So SIBO, yeah. like Roy said, because there's just been so much interest around an elemental diet for SIBO, we've done so much of that in our, in our clinical practice and just seen amazing results. Now, I will say with SIBO, eradication does not mean that it will never come back. You know, just like with any treatment, you have to do things afterwards to ensure that you don't have a relapse again. Yeah, okay? the elemental diet's only part of one part of a holistic plan to you exactly. know, for, for optimal. So I just want to make that clear. Yeah. Um, okay. Then we've seen you know a ton with inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, colitis, celiac disease, and that was when I started using an elemental diet 23 years ago in my clinical practice. That was the main thing that I used it with was, um, and we'll talk about this when we get into the details of what an elemental diet is, but really providing time, space, and healing for the intestines to decrease inflammation and ulceration in those, you know, those types of cases. Um, yeah. And Yeah, sorry. Yeah. We've also seen some people who we've treated with for SIBO had had other things. For example, we've had some clients who've had chronic pain, and that wasn't specifically why we put them on the elemental diet, but then all of a sudden we started realizing that their chronic pain was significantly improved and sometimes permanently mm -hmm. resolved. Yeah. So that was yeah. really powerful. And also, I, I would say that the other thing we've seen is just the byproduct of people saying that they sleep better, that their mood is better, their energy is better, their brain is turned on, mm -hmm. which, you know, again, to all of us, not surprising because we know the connection between the gut and all of those things, but nobody really goes into it saying, I'm going to do an elemental diet for my sleep. Um, right. But, you know, they go, they go through a couple of days or a week or, of the elemental diet and all of a sudden they find, oh my God, I'm sleeping better. And that's all just a result of that, you know, that gut healing, that decreased inflammation. What about, you know, one of the things that we hear often in our community, is like how people do food sensitivity testing and then they come back and it's like, you know, the top foods that they love to eat, that they eat a lot of, um, and, you know, are on that list and they have to cut out. And then, and then oftentimes it's like, it's just so many foods on the list that it gets, gets really paralyzing and debilitating and shocking for people. Right. And sometimes people go into denial and be like, I can't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what results do you see with like, um, being able to um, eat those foods again and, and just the body's ability to to digest them and not react. Yeah. So so I could speak to this as the nutrition counselor um, there. I see it's a little bit across the board. So I would say in general, if somebody gets success with an elemental diet, oftentimes they will have a greater tolerance to a wider variety of foods after they've healed their gut. And sometimes what an elemental diet will do is it will give their body that two weeks of, as I call it, that time and space for healing and not being on foods that when they then put food back into their diet, they're then able to determine quite quickly, like just like with an elimination diet, which foods they have a reaction to or which ones surprise them that they're able to tolerate more. And that's always with my caveat is if people go, okay if people go through the the um, plan of food reintroduction after an elemental diet in a systemic way because some people after they haven't had food for a few weeks despite our best advice might just go right back onto everything and then you know that just confounds things 
So, yeah. you know, if, if people are really interested in seeing what they tolerate and what they don't, they really need to do it systematically after. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like the ultimate elimination diet as well. Exactly. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the, um, it, the details in just a second. I just want to say for those of you who are new, we're talking about the elemental diet, not the elimination diet. So it's a little, it goes a lot deeper and it's typically, is it, it's, um, Put it this way, if you've never done the elimination diet, then this is not the right call for you. Uh, you might want to start off with the elimination diet and just cut out like the most inflammatory foods. And elemental diet is typically um, for people who've done a lot of different things and just, just have not, the needle hasn't moved, the healing needle hasn't moved for them in the right direction. So it's a little bit more advanced. Uh, but we have a lot of our our audience in our audience, I know, uh, many of you are struggling and SIBO is like frequent question that comes up. So this is really the call for you. Um, and for those of you who are listening to life, uh, tell us about what are some of the digestive issues that you're struggling with. Um, and if you're doing it on replay, uh, would you guys be able to maybe pop in like um, in a couple of days and, and maybe take a look at what questions have come in for people who are on replay? Yeah, of course. Sure. So, okay, awesome. So let's, um, and by the way, um, we will talk about a program that um, Debbie and Dr. Roy have put put in together, put put, put together, um, and um, it's to really guide you through the elemental diet because it can be a little uh, different from doing an elimination diet and there isn't a cookbook to it because you're not actually gonna, be, it's kind of, kind of neat. It's like, anti-cookbook. Anti-cookbook, yeah. And um, mom gets break from the kitchen um, kind of a thing. So, so why don't we just dive in and just talk about, just give us the nuts and bolts of like, what is the elemental diet from, you know, from like actual execution perspective? Like, how does it work? What is this whole shake thing? Um, all about and why do shakes? Because as you know, I'm not a big fan of shakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start and then you can chime in. Sounds good. Um, so, so the elemental diet is basically a hypoallergenic diet of pre-digested nutrients. And these nutrients are generally come in like a powdered form that's mixed with water. And that makes what we call the elemental shakes. Okay. And what's in these nutrients is all like, we always say, let's start with the definition of what elemental is. So elemental is like simple, basic, and uncomplicated, kind of fundamental. And that's exactly what an elemental shake is, is you take everything that a human needs to like survive and you break it down into its simplest components. So what that means is that protein is broken down into its smallest part, which is amino acids. And then um, carbohydrates are broken down into their smallest part, which is monosaccharides or simple sugars, which are generally in the form of glucose, dextrose, fructose, and then a glucose polymer, tapioca, maltodextrin. And then we have fats and you can really do, you know, different kinds of fats. Some elemental shakes include them. Some ask you to put them in yourself. Uh, and then you have nutrients such as um, vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes. Did I miss anything? No, that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. And, and so you drink these shakes as your, if you do a full elemental diet, you drink these shakes as your sole source of nutrition. And like I said before, there's ways to do um, partial or half elemental diets for certain conditions as well. But the full elemental diet is really what we were discussing before that gives that, you know, that bowel rest that we were talking about. And it's kind of like you've mentioned multiple times, Magdalena, it's, you know, this is not like a health food diet that you know, we promote the same diet that you do, which is a whole foods, healthy diet, um, omnivorous diet. You know, that's sort of like our, our main go-to at first. This is after, if you've tried these things and it hasn't worked, or if you have a really specific condition, for example, we have lots of people who are on excellent whole foods diets and we don't discourage them from continuing that after the elemental diet. But this is for a period of time to treat a condition or to try to make a change that you've been unable to make before. Mm -hmm. And how long typically do you um, prescribe that for? Yeah, so typically we start with somewhere in the two week time frame. I would say two weeks is the most typical. Yeah. And you would not think this, but the truth is, is that there's some people who feel so good on it, who want to stay on it longer. So we will often have someone who stays on it between two and three weeks. There's certain conditions, um, like an example would be inflammatory bowel disease. Somebody that's in like a severe flare up from Crohn's or colitis, they may need, if they're using this as their sole treatment, they may need to be on an elemental diet for more like four weeks or longer to get the full bowel rest to like heal their condition naturally. Um, 
but typically you don't stay on it longer than than that time frame. And, right. and most people don't go on it for that long. Yeah, most just, people two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. And and just to be clear, like you do not eat during this time any other any other foods, correct? If you're on a full elemental diet, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there's a question here. Uh, Veronica is asking if you suspect candida issue, would elemental elimination diet be recommended? It's a really good question and one that we get a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to do, sure. do take yeah. that one? So specifically for Canada, elemental diets have not been studied. And there, there were concerns, particularly early on, because the early formulas used um, the dextrose, which um, could, in theory, potentially feed Canada. So there were some concerns. We haven't really, we don't use, we use it generally a dextrose-free formula is what we generally recommend for most people. And so we've not really seen it make Canada worse. And there are some beliefs that maybe it does also starve the candida as well and might improve it, but there isn't really any research to show that. Mm -hmm. But we haven't seen, that was, that's a big consideration we have, you know, especially for me, women that have chronic yeast infections or things where, you know, they would know if it was to flare on an elemental diet. And we haven't seen that happen. But one of the things that we talk about in our program and in our clinical practice is doing some prophylactic antifungal treatments along with an elemental diet because you can and people tolerate it well. Mm -hmm. There's also a condition that that is suspected to go hand in hand with SIBO, which is called CFO or small intestinal fungal overgrowth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our feeling is if we're going to use an elemental diet to treat SIBO, we might as well give a prophylactic antifungal to address if there was a concurrent CFO at the same time. And the concerns are just that generally when we use any kind of antibacterial treatment, whether it's um, using herbs or especially with antibiotics that you get rid of the bacteria and that creates room for the fungus to overgrow. Yeah. But when you're, when you're using a starvation diet, which is the whole point of the elemental diet is that you're, you're nourishing the, the human, the person, and you're starving the bacteria. And in this case, probably starving the yeast as well. And that's why there's some suspicion that it actually does improve things like CFO, the overgrowth of fungus in the small intestine as mm -hmm. well. But like we said, there's not really any research. Yeah. Totally. So take a look at this question here. Um, are, they all, are these all natural ingredients in these shakes? Also, what is the protein source from these shakes? I have an autoimmune disorder. So there is nothing natural in the shake. No. <laughs> okay. It's, it really is the, the nutrient broken down into its simplest component. Okay. Yeah. So this is not food. It's a medical shake. Um, and so there is no protein in an elemental shake. The protein is broken down into its smallest component, which is an amino acid. And, and generally, just so, uh, to make sure everyone understands, really what most people react to in terms of foods. Now, we have very sensitive clientele, and I'm sure some of the people in the audience are very, very sensitive as well. We can react to all kinds of other things. But the main thing that most people react to negatively is the protein. And that's why, for example, for an autoimmune disorder, like you, like, like Gina mentioned, is you know we, we do see that it really helps in general because you're actually giving your body rest from any exposure to protein. You're only getting amino acids. And amino acids are generally tolerated by everybody. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so in addition to what Roy was talking about, about starving the bacteria, when you give like a hypoallergenic diet, you you create that anti-inflammatory bowel rest that, that we're talking about as well. Yeah. Um, and so the cool thing is that you don't cook for two weeks. <laughs> we have multiple people that have sent us pictures of a dishwasher filled with just glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I actually loved it. Um, even just coming home for lunch every day, because Debbie and I both have done the elemental diet for ourselves. We, we guinea pigged ourselves first. So when, when we did it, I, I loved it. I got to come home and not only not have to make lunch, I mean, I, I could drink it, uh, you know, pretty yeah, over the 30 minutes that I was drinking my shake while I was playing guitar for an extra 40 minutes a day instead of having to eat and clean up and then head back yeah. to work. So uh, you get a lot of extra time too, which you don't think about. And that's a nice benefit as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and the other thing also is that it actually tastes really good. Um, it tastes a little bit like, um, like a Pina, uh, what, what is it? Pina colada. Pina colada, yeah. Pina colada, that's, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it really yeah. does. And there's more formulas yeah. on the market, you know, oh, now boy. than there ever have been, you know, at, which okay. to us is really a sign that a lot of people are embracing the benefits of it is that more and more companies are coming out with different formulas and different flavors. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, and really, you guys, you know, this as much as like this might sound a little bit weird that I'm like promoting something here that's not natural, right? Because it's like the whole premise of hormones balance and Galena is to help women balance hormones in the most natural ways possible. And here we have a shake that is kind of like, you know, made in the lab. Um, but sometimes you just you just need to do that in order to stop feeling better. So you can go back to eating a whole food diet and not react to those foods that you're reacting currently, right? So um so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the connection between, um, and by the way, just before we go on, I want to talk about the connection between the gut and hormones. Um, but I just want to let you know, for those of you who, who think like, you know what, I think this is like, could be something really interesting for me to consider doing. Um, Debbie and, and Dr. Roy created a, put a program together. And so I'm going to just uh, pop the link down below here in just a second so that you can, you can check it out. But it's basically, as you start thinking about the elemental diet there's actually a lot there's so much questions that come up right like how do i do it how much shake do i take based on based on what right how you know do i can i have coffee in the morning or not right how do i get the rest of my family on board um do i do a full one or do i do a partial there's just so much and so they ended up creating a program because not everybody um they, they're not able to work with everybody one-to-one -one. and so that's the, the program the whole idea of the program is to uh, they took all the questions they used to get from the, the number of patients, the hundreds of patients they have guided, and then put that into a program so that you can do that in the sense of confidence and comfort and with a lot of clarity and, and confidence of, with the, you know, what you're doing is the right thing. Um, so let's uh, do, somebody's asking, so let me put the link up in a second and take a look at this question here, you guys, while I pull out the link. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you have hormone replacement therapy pellets? Sure. Yeah. 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 There's very few contraindications or reasons not to do that elemental diet. Mm -hmm. um, we, we go over them in the course, but it's, it's, it's a pretty short list and they're more extreme things. Like if you have uncontrolled diabetes or, you know, and then some of these can actually still be done, but just done under closer supervision with a physician. Mm -hmm. so if you have a current eating disorder. Right. Um, but uh, with children and young, younger children, you can, again, you can do it, but there's challenges to doing it specifically. And right. Yeah. Exactly. Those are really the only contraindications. And like Roy said, most of them, if you're under medical supervision, you know, you can, you can do it. You just would want to be monitored. The, um, but the main thing with the elemental diet is that you don't stop prescribed medications when you're on it. Mm -hmm. So whether that's your thyroid hormone that you take for your Hashimoto's or, you know, HRT, like that wouldn't, we would never stop a medication for two weeks to do a protocol. Yeah. And that's, um, so you don't stop your thyroid meds. You don't stop anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have had clients that like no longer need their proton pump inhibitors, you know, or no longer need pain medications. Um, but you know, anything that's prescribed, you'd want to talk to your doctor and wean off before you start, if you intended to stop sure. it. And there's a difference between kind of regular medications like hormone, thyroid, thyroid hormone, um, or insulin or something like that. Mm -hmm. And things that are as needed, like a proton pump inhibitor. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, for those of you who are going to be checking out the program, um, I just posted the link in the comments and, um, uh, the Steinbox are giving us $50 off you guys on, so just use the HP 50 coupon code to get $50 off the program. And that's, what's really going to help you, um, you know, go sail through it with just a lot more clarity and you guys do have customer support in case like people have questions, mm -hmm. they can email you. Right. And, um, and you have this huge customer support team of the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you, so, uh, Beatrice, I just posted the link. Can you see it? Um, and by the way, for those of you who are, uh, on our mailing list, it's on the, in the, our email as well this morning, uh, the email went out, so it's in there as well. Um, okay, so let's shift gear a little bit, talk about the connection between the gut and the importance of fixing that uh, with in connection to hormones. And we do have a lot of people here with thyroid issues, obviously. Okay, they don't see the link. Um, are you guys on the mailing list? Because it's there too. Um, I'm not sure where else to put it. Let me just figure this out while Debbie is talking and, and Roy yeah, is talking. I'm going to let Roy talk that one. Yeah. So there, there's more and more information um, regarding hormones and your gut microbiome, that gut bacteria. And um, specifically, the few things that we were able to really find good, good research on are the, the gut microbiome and estrogen. 
uh, and estrogen estrogen dominance. And what we see is that um, the the gut bacteria actually use an enzyme called uh, beta glucuronidase that actually helps degrade uh, estrogen. And what can happen is as you get older. So this also kind of ties in into menopause is as you're perimenopausal and menopausal, your gut bacteria changes quite a bit, actually becomes much more like male gut bacteria. It's, uh, women in general have more uh, variety, larger variety of flora, which helps regulate their hormones. Uh, it's amazing what, what gut bacteria do for us. Uh, it's really, it's really amazing. It's like a whole nother organ. And as you get older, get closer to perimenopause, or if you're dealing with poor gut bacteria, you can have relative estrogen dominance because the bacteria are helping degrade estrogen. They're helping metabolize estrogen. The second thing is, as you get a little bit older and move towards menopause, you're producing less estrogen and, and you're relying more on the liver and the gut bacteria to help that metabolism. And so we're seeing that that's, uh, you know, that that's, those are two of the main, main things we've seen. Mm -hmm. In terms of thyroid, not specifically, there's not really specific research that I've seen in terms of that, uh, except for, we, of course, we know if your gut bacteria is off, that increases your risk for autoimmunity in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just like everything that you do in all of your work and all of your books, it's like, you know, the more that we heal our body, the more that we balance our hormones, you know, in, in every facet that that yeah. happens. Yeah. In fact, I always say that, you know, hormones is like the last thing to fail kind of a thing. Um, it's typically, um, that's why for those of you guys who follow us for a while, you know, like when it comes to testing, I always recommend to do a lot more upstream um, kind of testing of just understanding what's your vitamin D3 like and your magnesium levels and your, you know, your whole inflammatory, the inflammatory markers, your liver function and all that, because that's what, you know, when you have start having hormone problems is typically is when all these other things have been mm -hmm. off for a very long time. And that's when hormones then start going out of whack. And so if you, and then if you do the hormone testing only, then you're like, okay, well then what do I need to pedal back and fix? Right. So you kind of end up doing two tests, two bunch of tests anyway. Um, cool. So the, some people are seeing the link. Some people are not seeing the link. Um, I'm going to, once we log off, I'm just going to go and see, um, what's showing on Facebook and on YouTube, but it's, uh, if, uh, if you are on our mailing list, just open the email from this morning and you should be able to see, uh, the link to the program. So tell us a little bit more about, about the program. Like what is the, who did you guys create it for? And like, what I, what was the intent of creating the program and the final product and the results that you want people to get from it? Yeah. So we, we had a lot of clinical experience before we created the program. So like we said already, you know, we've really walked hundreds of people through an elemental diet. And what we learned in that process was that the same questions would often come up. You know, people would experience the same uh, side effects of doing the elemental diet, which we call the par for the course side effects of doing an elemental diet, nothing to be concerned about, uh, but things to, to know in advance. And, and what we learned in that process is first of all, A, not everybody can work with us one-on-one. -on -one. And so we really wanted this, because it's such a safe and effective treatment to be able to reach so many more people. And you know, we were talking about this this morning, what were you saying about there's so much misinformation? Yeah, I was gonna mention that. So I mean, one of the things, especially being a physician, I mean, I know how I was taught about elemental diets and, and how it was used in the hospitals, which was very sparingly. Uh, the formulas that were around a while ago were absolutely disgusting, and that's not the case anymore. You even said you actually liked the the uh, physician's elemental formula, and mm -hmm. we've had people who who have enjoyed other ones. There's lots of other flavors as well now. Um, so I think there's so much misunderstanding from physicians. I mean, m most physicians don't recommend it because you know it's easier for them to prescribe a drug or. Uh, and, and sometimes that can be effective, but it but it comes with its own issues, and so. Yeah, so we we've just seen a lot of misinformation about how hard an elemental diet is, mm -hmm. and and that's why it's been discouraged by so many doctors and even natural doctors who just don't really have the experience of walking people through it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Debbie has walked so many people, like handheld so many people through an elemental diet, and what we found is that the success rate was virtually a hundred percent if they had all the information they need and mm -hmm. did the proper planning. And that's what I was going to say is even amongst a group of practitioners that I work with who who all treat SIBO and some of whom do elemental diets, what we were finding was that I was getting these results that were like far above other people. 
And what, what I, you know, talked that down to was because of my background in nutrition, I wasn't just putting people on a two week elemental diet. See ya. You know, what I was doing was giving them like a preparatory phase before they start the elemental diet, then, you know, what to expect when they're on it. And then that transition off of it. And so that's how we created the program is, you know, the program allows you to prepare for the elemental diet, execute the elemental diet transition off of it and then helps you troubleshoot things if you don't feel better after the elemental diet well what are the other directions that you might want to start to look in at that case yeah Yeah. and you know a lot of women in our community are actually doing the intermittent fasting and so for those of you who are doing if you know the benefits of if right and the reason why you do it and gut health and rebuilding your bacterial flora is one of one big factor and strengthening your immune system and and so it's all this research shows what's happening. Is that is that comparable here too? Is that the elemental diet is a form of a fast for the body? Would you say? It's exactly what I said before. It's 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 feeding the person while having that effect on you know starving the bacteria, providing bowel rest, all that all that stuff. Because there are some people who you know simply can't do um, intermittent fasting or you know calorie restriction despite the health benefits because they would lose too much weight. You know. So or they have hypoglycemia or cortisol problems, exactly. adrenal stuff. Adrenal yeah. fatigue. Yeah, I yeah. definitely would not call it a fast. I mean, I think it has some of the same benefits, like Debbie said, but mm-hmm. but it's not fasting. I mean, you are getting the proper caloric intake all day. And as a matter of fact, you know, as we talk about the program, you kind of are getting it more like a baby would more frequently than you mm-hmm. would eat meals. Yeah, you know, right. you're, you're kind of uh, bottle feeding yourself or <laughs> not bottle, right. but shake, yeah. eating. shake feeding yourself uh, more frequently. Yeah. yeah. Um, the cool thing is that the, um, you know, that one, one of the cool things is also the fact that it's um, like you walk around not being hungry. And that's that's really important. You know, you yeah. can still go on about your day if you can exercise and, you know, and and go to work. And so, you know, unlike um, like, for example, our thyroid detox is very caloric, calorically restricted. A lot of people struggle with it because of like you know, they have to go to work and they're like, oh, I just had this cucumber salad. It's not, that's, you know, and I'm like kind of fainting. So one other question I have for you is, and we have some other questions coming in. Uh, so just stay on for that, for that, you guys. I just want to ask you, do you ever see anybody having like die-off effects? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we, we always say that die-off is like a double-edged sword because on one hand, die-off doesn't feel good. You know, no one wants to feel die-off. But on the other hand, one of the things that the elemental diet is doing is targeting a microbial shift in the body, you know, which, which for in cases of SIBO or, you know, in a lot of cases, people don't even realize they have a bacterial overgrowth that's behind one of their health conditions or autoimmune conditions. Um, and so, so yeah, so one of the things that we, you know, prepare people for is the potential for die off, which can come in the form of everything, you know, so, you know, digestive, uh, you know, a flare up of like digestive symptoms, uh, fatigue, uh, or energy problems, blood sugar dysregulation. Um, yeah. yeah muscle aches and brain, brain, brain fog, brain fog. Like, yeah, kind of like flu like symptoms yeah. sometimes. But if you prepare your body, you know, for the elemental diet correctly, mm-hmm. you minimize, you know, how much of that you're going to experience. Not that you won't experience it. Some people don't, you know, some people, yeah, yeah feel amazing the entire time. That was yeah. Roy's experience. At, yeah, you know, I love it. And countless people's experience. Some people feel fantastic the whole time. But what I can say now, you know, in this seat after so much experience is that nobody feels bad and die off for the entire time. Right. I would say you get little pockets of it where you might feel bad for a day or a day and a half, and then you go back to feeling, you know, okay. And then you might feel that again. So it's yeah. really a couple of days, not, you know, and, and, you know, I don't know about you guys, but like, I actually like kind of seeing die off, even though it can be unpleasant because I feel like something is happening, mm-hmm. <laughs> something exactly. is shifting and, you know, shit is leaving. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's just like, yeah. bring it on. Uh, we have a question from B Rose and she's saying, have, have these shakes been tested for glyphosate toxins and heavy metals? So there's not just one type of shake. Yeah. There's a lot of different companies that that promote the shakes. And so you'd have to, you know, once you decide if an elemental diet is something you decide to do, which shake product that you're going to use. And in our course, we go through and explain all the different shake products on the market and why you would choose one over the other, you know, depending on their ingredients. Then you would have to reach out to that company yeah. and ask them. Then my gut is probably yes, because th- these are all really high quality nutraceutical yeah. companies. 
Um, and, there, and some of them are actually like FDA approved medical foods, um, mm-hmm. depending on what you choose. But they're, they're very, very high quality companies with good integrity. I think all of the mm-hmm. ones that we. Exactly yeah, I'll be surprised. And to be honest, I mean, as a manufacturer, you know, we manufacture our own supplements. Um, we have it's by default. It's, it gets tested for uh, for heavy metals. Uh, all the ingredients are coming in. In fact, a good GMP facility, which these shakes are made in. Um, we're required for the ingredients to be tested as they come into the factory and then as they are leaving. And so things like yeast, bacteria, viruses, mm-hmm. heavy metals are like by default, GMP has to, GMP facilities have to test. When it comes to glyphosate, is then you just have to look for the non-GMO uh, label if it's if it's there. But like you said, you know, the you have to remember that um, first of all, the Steinbox are all about really high quality product in um, as, as much as I am and, you know, and, and associate themselves and, you know, with products that we, they really believe in. And these manufacturers, I'll be really surprised if they did not test for that because the population they're working with is so highly sensitive and, um, and is so focused on clean eating already that I'll be very surprised if this was not mm-hmm. tested, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things to just piggyback on that to just pick back on that for a second, is that, you know, what I've seen since I've been following, you know, elemental diet products for over 20 years now, is that, you know, whereas these products were always like hypoallergenic, but they were hypoallergenic, but they were broken down forms of soy or corn or dairy, you know, they have really transitioned, particularly over the last seven years, to be, um, like true hypoallergenic where like the the main ingredients don't contain any of those things. And then when they add vitamins in, they're adding like methylated vitamins and, yeah. you know, really high quality things. And so that yeah. is so different than 20 plus years ago. Yeah, yeah, totally. And plus consumers are getting more and more sophisticated, like B. Rose asking, you know, a pretty sophisticated question, right? Which is like probably 10 years ago, people had no idea even what life was it's where. Exactly. Right. So awesome. Um, so what are some of, and for those of you who are joining us a little bit later, we, we've got a $50 giveaway coupon with a HB50 code that you can enter on the website. Highly recommend to do the program. Um, by the way, the Steinbox have also been featured in, um, many of you know, the CBO Info website and Dr. Stein, um, uh, Steinbecker. Um, and so, and she is um, in a big way, she's a big supporter of their work as well. And so I just want to let you guys know that this is um, something that a lot of practitioners in the CBO world are really going in that direction. You might not have heard of it yet, but I think it's just a matter of time before elemental diet becomes a lot more mainstream, um, you know, as a sort of um, a short term, um, I shouldn't say short term, but as a as a intervention um, mm-hmm. for a greater benefit, health benefit. Um, it's just a lot faster, right, than, than doing a lot of other modalities, especially for people who, like we said at all, uh, have tried it, have tried it all. But you mm-hmm. haven't tried this, see? So you haven't tried it. <laughs> Um, the other thing too, Magdalena, is that it can also be, in addition to being a good, like relatively short-term mm-hmm. intensive treatment, mm-hmm. we actually use it in our practice a lot as just a, a tool that people can use intermittently, particularly mm-hmm. for people with IBD, you know, inflammatory bowel disease. Or, or even IBS. Yeah. Or yeah, IBS, rheumatoid arthritis. We have one client who has sort of uh, intermittent, he had chronic pain and now it's intermittent pain. And and he will just do a shake or two and that will kind of set it back into remission. So people are definitely using it more long term. Like a maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. We go through that after we teach someone how to do a full elemental diet. We have a a lesson in the course that says, you know, how to incorporate elemental shakes ongoing into your healing toolkit, you know? And, And some people really love that option because you know this, when you first feel something going wrong with your health, it's like you're at this junction. It's like, is it going to go bad or is it going to get better? You know, mm-hmm. and if you have an intervention that you've learned that works for you, you know, you can come in and do something to kind of move yourself in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds good. OK, um, so I think we are good for questions. So let's just give it two more minutes. If you guys have any other questions, then post it. If you're watching this on reply, post your question down below and we'll we'll. Um, uh, the Steinbox will pop in in a couple of days and then and then um, answer those questions. So, well, you know, thank you for being here today, uh, being of such service to so many people who are really struggling um, with digestive stuff. I mean, that digestive stuff is just is just um, I mean, once your digestion 
is working again is just like everything just starts falling into place right mm -hmm. you know as you know i'm i've got my own um issues going on right now with my digestion as well and um and you know and it's no fun and it's the amount mm -hmm. of the mental energy that you're putting into like okay what's the next thing that i need to try it's exhausting yeah. um, so definitely um a way to go another tool in your toolbox mm -hmm. to consider for sure Thanks everyone here for, for being here today with us. Um, I hope this was helpful, give you another um, angle to look at your digestive health. And, um, you know, and if you're dealing with a lot of hormonal stuff and digestive health at the same time, you always want to start off with your digestion and not treating your hormones first. Remember, we cannot out hormone our hormones. We're going to fix our digestion and liver health and, um, and blood sugar balance first um, before any hormonal healing can happen. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here today, taking out the afternoon, uh, being here with us. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, wishing you guys all the best, and we'll see you soon on Another Life. Bye-bye for now. Bye.